This is KGW News at Noon. Good afternoon to you and thank you for joining us here at noon. I'm Nina Melhoff filling in for Brenda Braxton today. Governor Kate Brown just wrapped up a news conference on the first step toward lifting COVID-19 restrictions. So starting May 1st, hospitals and surgical and dental centers will now be able to resume elective or non-emergency procedures. During that press conference, Governor Brown outlined criteria health care providers have to meet in order to do those procedures. So first, they need to minimize the risk of transmission to patients and health care workers. Two, they have to maintain adequate capacity in the case of a virus surge. And three, they have to support the health care workforce. Many Oregonians have been hoping for this news because it means we can now start to think about scheduling that much needed dental work or medical treatment that you've been waiting for. She went on to say lifting the restrictions shows that Oregon is moving forward in the fight against COVID-19 and reopening the state. But at the same time, we need to be cautious. But let me be very, very clear. We still need to proceed with this step very carefully. We will, continuing, we will continue to monitor how this will affect our hospital systems and our health care workers in line with how the virus is moving through our state. KGW's Pat Doris will have more on Governor Brown's announcement coming up in our evening shows. And we're getting more insight into the toll the virus is taking on the economy. So according to today's latest jobs report, more than 4.4 million more Americans applied for unemployment benefits last week alone. Locally, that's over 82,000 people filed claims in Washington, and in Oregon, the number is more than 36,000. So that means in the last five weeks, a total of 26 million people have filed claims of unemployment. To put that into perspective, that is one in every six American workers who have lost their jobs since last month. And even though a lot of those businesses are shut down right now, there are still companies hiring. Amazon, FedEx, and UPS are looking for package handlers and warehouse workers. Grocery stores like Fred Meyer, New Seasons, and Safeway are looking for clerks and customer service specialists. Whole Foods needs an in-person shopper. Now, these are just a few of the local options that we have found. You can find the full list under the Featured section on our KGW homepage. And speaking of employment, our newest KGW member, Galen Etlin, is hosting a live Q&A happening right now. We're dipping into it to peek on them until 1 o'clock today. It just started here at noon. He's talking with employment experts about where and how to look for a job. And one of those experts is the founder of popular job site PDX Pipeline. You can watch that Q&A at KGW.com or on any of our social pages. Well, right now, the House is getting ready to vote on that $484 billion stimulus bill. Most of the money will help replenish the Paycheck Protection Program to hopefully this time around actually help small businesses struggling during this pandemic. Now you can see uh, lawmakers following safety measures. They are wearing masks there on the floor. Because of safety issues, the voting process is taking longer than usual, and they're actually voting in small groups um, and taking breaks to clean the chambers. So the deal includes $75 billion for hospitals, $25 billion for tests, and $60 billion for the Small Business Disaster Relief Loan Program. And here's what House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said about the deal the other day. This is a real victory uh, for uh, uh, smaller businesses, as the uh, leader has said, who really didn't have the banking relationships. The Senate passed the bill Tuesday. It is expected to clear the House later today. We will keep you posted. All right, we want to get you up to speed on the latest numbers here in the Northwest. More than 12,000 people in Washington are infected with the virus. 692 have died. In Oregon, there are just over 2,000 cases with 78 deaths. Nearly 600 Oregonians are believed to have recovered from the virus. That is about a third of the known cases. And sadly, we've learned one of the Oregonians who recently died worked at Whole Foods in downtown Portland's Pearl District. Our Mike Benner shows us what that store and others are doing to protect their employees. 
At Whole Foods Market in the Pearl District, hearts are heavy following the death of a worker. The store confirms the employee died from the coronavirus. It's really my heart is with the family uh, who's lost somebody that was massively uh, important to them. Dan Clay is the president of United Food and Commercial Workers Local 555. To be clear, the union does not represent Whole Foods employees, but Clay will tell you they are still part of the greater grocery workers family, and his heart aches for the worker who died. That person, just like my members, go out and are putting their lives on the line, and to have them uh, pay the ultimate price for that is is tragic. Making matters even worse, KGW has learned that a second Whole Foods employee has tested positive for COVID-19, this time at the Hollywood store. Whole Foods is not releasing any information about their roles at the stores. They join a growing list of grocery workers who have fallen ill with the coronavirus. We know of an employee at the Fred Meyer on Northeast Gleason and three workers at two Winco stores in Oregon. Anytime you end up putting uh, you know, uh, 25, 30,000 people uh, face to face with an unseeable virus, you're going to see those cases popping up more and more and more. Clay says a number of grocery stores have added safety measures like plexiglass at cashier stands and social distancing. But he says it's not enough. He's relieved to know the Oregon Health Authority is now suggesting grocery workers should have access to testing. It just seems like such an obvious thing to do in my mind. Uh, they're taking the extra risk. They should know. And perhaps it's never been clearer than right now, following the death of an employee at the Whole Foods in the Pearl. It's got to be just a, a terrible time, and uh, I feel pretty bad about it. A spokesperson for Whole Foods Market says that the safety of employees and customers is a top priority. They say to help stop the spread of COVID-19, they're requiring temperature checks and face masks for all employees. They've improved their cleaning and disinfection procedures. They're also closing stores up to two hours early every night to give employees the chance to restock shelves and rest ahead of the next day. I'm Mike Benner for KGW News. Look at this video, just incredible. This is a tornado hitting Southern Oklahoma yesterday. Look at it going over the top of the roof of that building, tearing off parts of it. This was in the town of Medill, about 10 miles from the Texas border. The South has been getting hammered with storms for actually the past couple of weeks now. And yesterday alone, 21 tornadoes were reported across Texas and Oklahoma. 